The following DVD contains several video and internet link components involving firefighting. Dunrobincastle.com, in association with the Canadian Fallen Firefighters Foundation, has produced a series of DVD and internet-based videos on firefighting. Working together, the objective is to increase awareness and help raise funds for our national monument to be built in honor of those who have given their lives in the line of duty. The DVD contains in menu form a special documentary featuring the memorial event held in Ottawa on Sunday, September 10, 2006. Following the documentary are a series of video components. Each individual segment will take you on a journey from the past to the present, from firefighter stories to safety tips, from the complete unedited speeches to music videos and upcoming special events. You'll see Timekeepers, a collection of historical Canadian fires including the Parliament Building Fire of 1916 and the Halifax Explosion of 1917. Firefighter Stories will feature a series of interviews with firefighters describing their experiences in the line of duty and safety tips for kids will be advice from firefighters from right across Canada. Help support the Canadian Fallen Firefighters Foundation. Without question, the people who will always be there for you. Somehow, somebody found a coat and somebody found a fur hat, and we were taken to the Chateau Laurier. Mother was taken to the Chateau Laurier in another sleigh. I, my sister, and the two maids were in the first one. When we arrived at the Chateau Laurier, it was the full of the session, so there was no room. Somebody thought of one little room that nobody ever wanted, because it was very, very small and badly located, but it was better than nothing. So we were taken there. Francoise, I can still see her, was on the bed playing with her feet, 11 months old. She had no other care in the world. The two maids were petrified, literally petrified. And mother was praying to all the saints she knew and a few she had not heard of yet, of mother, dad, thinking of that. And I was looking out of the window, and I can still see that. The window was immediately in front of the tower that was then, it, the, the one at the present one is much higher, but there was one even then. And uh, the parliament was ablaze. I had never seen anything like that, needless to say, but there was I, and suddenly I heard the strike of midnight, the 12th strike, sort of 12 strokes. And on the 12th, the whole thing collapsed inside in an incredible blaze of flames. And, well, I can still see it as if I'd seen it yesterday. A fire or an emergency situation can happen anywhere, anytime. The men and women who deal with these emergencies face danger, stress, and unimaginable risks, sometimes even losing their lives in the line of duty. The easiest way I can tell this story is to let the firefighters and their families speak for themselves. The first guys on the scene are your firefighters, right? And they, they deal with that, and then they'll call in the special units as necessary. But you never know what that call is going to be. I think a lot of people actually don't realize that the majority of the calls actually, they're not fires. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with everything else that goes on in a city that people live in. I mean, crawling into a basement fire at night, um, getting in far, not being able to see your hands in front of your face, uh, hearing the fire, finally seeing a bit of a glow, putting it out, and then uh, your low air alarm goes off and you've got to get out. You've got about four or five minutes to follow your hose line over top of furniture through, in one case, band equipment that we didn't even know we had crawled through, uh, drums, guitars, everything smashed over. You don't know what you're going through, but you don't let go of that hose line until you're out of that building. Can you describe how loud the explosion was? Uh, it was so loud that 
you didn't know where the noise was. You thought it was right in your ears. It was all encompassing. Yeah. And they did say afterwards, after I grew up and found out, they said that many people were killed just by the noise in their ears. Must have been horrendous. And my uncle, who died there, didn't have one mark on his body, but they said it was the noise in the ears that caused it. In the end, it all comes down to one word, respect. A national monument is needed to show Canadians who these people are and the dangers they face every day. Help support the Canadian Fallen Firefighters Foundation for those who have fallen and for those still with us today who have earned the right to the word, respect. I once heard a story about a firefighter man Sometimes he couldn't sleep the nights away From the cities to the country To the water bomber's land As he takes his life in his hands once again He says a sign in its car carriage with the names And on it every firefighter's breath from each and every one of them they gave To the spirit of a firefighter's bravery Bumper wagons, horses, the great booth fire roared And the big old building burned on down when is the depression, the blitz of London nights To the fire in the harbor 49 Cause there's a sign in its car carriage with the names And on it every firefighter's bravery From each and every one of them The spirit of a firefighter's bravery. Change stations, and, and you might not know the person you're working with on a platoon. Here, you see everybody Wednesday nights, you see everybody at calls, and it's, it's a family. So it, you build a huge camaraderie uh, after, uh, in my case, 11 years doing this. Je suis pompière et je m'engage avec fierté en l'honneur de tous ceux qui ont succombé devant moi, un acte de bravoure inoubliable. From the 50s through 2000, a million voices called. When the family needed courage, they were there. And today the firefighters are still bounded into one. Stand ready to show how much they care. Cause there's a sign in its car carriage with the names <laughs>